Well, let's get right into the word of the Lord. Now, before we go into the word, let me say that this text that I'm about to read is just going to be my framework. I'm going to try to get to it today, but if I don't get to what I really want you to see today, um, I will preach part two in a couple more weeks. Let us go to Genesis chapter number three, verse number one, resting upon your feet. Genesis chapter number three, verse number one. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fill leaves together to make themselves mourn cloth. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid, good God about it, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God from among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, <laughs> I like this, it's very funny to me. The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. I want to teach or preach today from the subject identity crisis. Sit down. Identity crisis. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what you're going to do in that house. Open up the listeners' ears so they'll be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We give you praise in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Don't keep us, you may be seated. In my opinion, the greatest crisis we have in the world today is an identity crisis. An identity crisis is defined as a period of uncertainty or confusion in a person's life. One of Satan's tactics is to get you so confused that you don't know who you are in God. Amen. And by doing so, this would affect every decision that you would ever make. Amen. If you don't know who you are in God, it will affect the job that you take, if you don't know who you are, you would take the wrong job. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. If you don't know who you are, you will live in the wrong city. Oh, Jesus. If you don't know who you are, you, God forbid, you will marry the wrong person. Yes. 
The enemy has tricked America. Yes. Has tricked us because a lot of people don't know who they are, which causes a man to decide to be a woman. And make a woman decide to be a man. Yeah. I know homosexuality is a sin for a lot of people. And we love you and I want you to know that we love you. But it's still a sin. Amen. And we still love you. Yeah. But one thing I will preach against harder than homosexuality, which is a sin. But one thing that I will preach against harder than that is you changing what God has created you to be. Yeah. If God gave you a male organs, you are a male. Yeah. And you should be going to the men's bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. If God gave you females organs, you are a woman. And you should be going to the ladies' room. Yeah. You do not have the authority to change what God has given you. Yeah. People do this because we have an identity crisis. What is this that has snuck up in a church mm -hmm. that we are afraid to preach against this? <laughs> it's sad in, in the world that we live in in Sister Regina that I have to address this like this. We know homosexuality is a sin, but God loves all it. No, 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 no. We shouldn't even have to do that. Amen. Sin is sin. Amen. But now because of the nature of our world or our time, we got to make people feel good in their sin. And if I make you feel good in your sin, I'm not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. All oh, have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. It is not my job to make you feel comfortable in your sin. It's my job to tell you that you are in sin and get up to God. Stand up. God, we are in an identity crisis. Yes, yes, Lord. Before I get too far in this concept of identity crisis, let us talk about identity. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what your identity is not. Mm -hmm. I love this list that Bishop Dale Bronner gives. He gives a list that describes what our identity is not. But I just titled this list, False Identity Phrases. This is what you are not. Some people say, I am what I have. <laughs> you are not what you have. God forbid, if you have money right now and you lose all of your money, mm -hmm. who are you being? <laughs> Some people, and you hear me out, you should love your spouse. But some people just so wrapped up in my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. My man. But when your man leaves you, who are you then? Just because you have a man don't mean that man going to stay with you. So when that man leaves you, who are you? Some people say, I am what I do. You are not what you do. Amen, amen. The job that you have right now, God, if you, let's just say you are a secretary. If you lose that job and your identity is wrapped up in that job, who are you then? Yes. You know, we should not be, we should not depend on a job because somebody can give us a pink slip tomorrow. Amen. But if your identity is all in your job, you know, gave all your best years your job and you Amen. lose your job, what 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 who are you then? Amen. Well, people say I am what I do. You, you know, I thought about this. I'm not, and God has grown me from this. I haven't always been like this, but I thank God for maturity in Him. I'm not really about titles. Amen. 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 Now, 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 just don't co come up and call me Derabius. You know, if you younger than me, please call me Mr. Derabius at least. <laughs> but I'm not going to get bent out of shape if you don't call me Pastor Colors. Because I'm more than a preacher. 
Because in this arena, you may call me Pastor Colors, but when I work for the county, they call me Director Colors. But, but, but just call me Doregas, if you will, because I'm just not a preacher. I'm just not a director. A title does not make me. Some people walk around, call me Pastor So and So, call me Deacon So and So, and you only got three members. Come on, somebody. Just like uh, one of my titles at work, it says executive director. And I told them in a meeting one day, no, I don't like that word executive director because I don't have no one to direct. I work by myself most of the time. So, so you, we, we are not what we do. Are y'all with me so far? I'm going so far, I'm going to blow your wig and sock off at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Some people say I am what other people say or think about me. You are not what other people say or think about you. I learned one thing. I'm about to say something, but I forgot I'm being recorded, so let me work this right. I learned one thing about people. They will applaud you today and stab you in the back of the world. So you, your identity should not be wrapped up in what other people think or say or think about you. Somebody walked in my office the other day and said, I bet people mad because you're on the radio. And I said, and? <laughs> people have been talking about me since I was preaching in the yard. I got some scared. I don't care what people, my identity is not wrapped up in what people say or think about me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come with something better than that. Some people say I am nothing more than my worst mistake. We all have sin. You're going to make a mistake tomorrow. If not tomorrow, you're going to make a mistake this year. This is your job. You repent, learn from your mistake, and keep it moving. All of us have made mistakes. All of us have committed sin that we are not proud of. As my former pastor would say, if walls could talk, if shoes could talk, for me, if back seats could talk. Come on, brother. If there was a mistake, but I am not my mistake. I learn from my mistake. I repent from my mistake. And I keep it moving. Some people think I am where I came from. I came from the ghetto, so I'm ghetto. When I go around and travel, especially across the state of Georgia, and people ask me where I'm from, I tell them I, I'm from Lincolnton. But I reside in Grove Town. And they said, Lincolnton, Lincolnton, Lincolnton. Oh, the Red Devils. Did you play football? No. <laughs> Just because I'm from Lincolnton does not mean that I play football. Amen. I am not where I came from. Yeah. I'm not knocking nobody who played football, but I did not play football. I was in student government. I made sure we had a homecoming party to go to after the football game. <laughs> You are not where you come from. Because your family is dysfunctional doesn't mean that you have to be dysfunctional. <laughs> you are not your zip code. One thing they can determine about you, especially in an educational uh, arena, that they can tell your background by your zip code. Mm -hmm. They can tell who you are by your zip code. You are not your zip code. Amen. Say that. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So this list, this, I, I don't want you to think of these phrases as your identity, Amen. because it's not. Amen. Another one. Thank you. One more. I am what I feel. Mm. Just because you feel defeated doesn't mean that you are. I have some days that I don't feel like I'm saved. <laughs> but that does not mean I'm not saved. So I don't want you, your identity to be wrapped up in these things because these are false identities. Yes, yes. 
Well, Pastor Phillips, what is identity? This is how, on my definition of identity. Identity is a biblical understanding of knowing to whom you belong. I'm going to start right there. You got to know who you belong to. Yes. Amen. And who you are in relationship to Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you want to know your identity, let's first take this apart. Let's find out to whom I belong. Yes. Yes. Okay. If I find out who created me, yes. Yes. I can find out who I am. Yes. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 1. Verse number 26. Through the 27. Elder Jones, if you, Hold on. let's fix that for me, Elder Jones. As she fixed that, I, I want us to know who we are, y'all. Amen. You should not be walking around defeated Amen. when you know who you serve Amen. and who you belong to. Amen. Let's look at this, Elder Jones. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth. Start right there. Let me go back. So God said, let us. Now a lot of theologians will question who God was speaking to. This is, some theologians would say God was speaking to the angels, but this is who I believe. God was speaking to the yes, Trinity. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. God the Father, him. Well, and God the Father spoke the word, so he was speaking it to Jesus the Son. Jesus the Son created us. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit put God's spirit in the inside yes, of us. Amen. So we are made in the image of, if God made me, that means I belong to him. Yes. My goal as a Christian is to be a follower of Christ, yes. is to, to ultimately to look more like Jesus. Yes. And if I look more like Jesus, I look more like God. Yes. Yes. I'm not, now, don't take any of my messages that I'm giving you a ticket to sin because, yes, yes we're going to sin because we're in human form, yes. but here's the goal of our faith is to look more like Jesus. Yes. I might fall into sin, but I'm not going to practice sin. Yes. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Yes, ma'am. So God created man in his own image. Oh, my God. In the image of God, he created him. Mm -hmm. Male and female, he created So him. God created yeah. all of us, male and female, yeah. in his image. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. So if God created us, we belong to him. Belong Amen. To him. Amen. Am I right so far? Yes, sir. Yeah. Let me go one, let's go to um, Genesis chapter number two, verse number seven, because in Genesis chapter number two, they read, um, tell the story of creation of humanity, but it gives us, gives us a little more detail. Elder Jones. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, mm -hmm. and the man became a living creature. I love yeah. this because God made us from the cheapest thing on earth. <laughs> Dirt. Amen. At the end of the day, you are nothing but dirt. But you are dirt with God's breath in your lungs. Yeah. 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 When God breathed into you, he put his spirit in the inside of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have God's spirit living Jesus. in the inside of me. Yeah. I belong. He made me. I belong to him. And I have his breath in my lungs. Yeah. I have a portion of his spirit living in the inside. Of me. That's my identity. I belong to God. That's my identity. I reflect the character of God. Amen. Amen. I love this, Elder Jones, because it, it teaches us humanity and divinity at the same time. Yes, yes. It teaches us humanity. We are human and also humility. We ought to be humble. Yes, you may be on white red um, pile of dirt. Somebody else may be red pile of dirt. Somebody else may be black pile of dirt. But at the end of the day, all of us, no matter what color you are, you are nothing but dirt. Amen. 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 But we got God's breath in our body, y'all. Yes. Yes, I belong to God. You belong to God. Yes. That's why when you be around other believers who have God's spirit living inside of them, you something beat in your yes. inner man. Yes. Something yes. connect in your inner man. Yes. The moment you come to TFC and nothing leaks in your spirit, we need to do something. Either you need to check you or I need to check me. Because when spirit connect the spirit, when God connects to God, something happens. Tell somebody you belong to 
God. The moment God breathed his breath. Yes. Good God Almighty. I woke up at 5.30 this morning ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> the moment God breathed his breath in the inside of us, y'all, yes. now I have a relationship with God. Yes. 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 He is in me and I am in him. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Yes. When he blew his breath in, in, inside of me, yeah. he got into me, yeah. and I got into him. Yeah. I'm back up here. Hallelujah. I got a relationship yeah. with yeah. God. He's L-O-M. He created us from the dust of the ground, but he yeah. put his breath inside of us. Yeah. Let me give you one more scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verses 19 through 20 for me, Elder Jones. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Within you, whom you have from God, mm -hmm. you are not your own. Come on, man. For you were bought yes. with a price. Come on. So glorify God in your body. Yes. I'm going to come back to that scripture in a couple more weeks. But your temple, your body is the temple of the temple. Holy Spirit. Yes. That's why we shouldn't do anything to make the dove cry. Yes, yes. 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 Because his breath is in me. Yes, yes. I belong to him. Yes, yes. His breath is in me. Yes. My identity is in God. Yes, yes. I am who God says I am. I can be what God says I can be. Yes. I can do what God says I can do. Yes, and I can go where yes, God says yes, I can go. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are defined by who is it who is in the inside of you. That is your identity. Who's living in the inside of you? If God said that I'm the head and not the tail, I'm the head and not the tail. If God said I'm the lender and not the bar, regardless of what the bank said, I'm the lender and not the bar. That's who, who created me. That is who I belong to. That's what he says about me. And I got a relationship. I want to make sure I emphasize this. I got a relationship with him because his breath is in my lungs. Yes. And I pour out my praise. Yes. That's why I'm trying to get you to praise God. I know yes. some of you don't like to praise God in the sanctuary, but when you praise God in the sanctuary, yes. and we have a corporate praise, something happens. Yes. If you, if Elder Lamb is shouting, I'm running, and Elder Joe just say hallelujah, that's still yes. praise. Yes. There's something that happened in the house. Yes. Something that happened in your house. So you are the sign. I feel a breakthrough just happened. Somebody burning just got lifted.
that I teach about identity. Oh my God, my God. Yeah. Oh my God, my God. 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 I'm too fast. I think it's important for me to teach about identity Thank you, Jesus. on today, Father's Day. Because if we get a biblical understanding of who a man is and the man besides Jesus, the man is kind of like God is the foundation but this carpet is laying on the foundation and the chairs is on top of the carpet. Yes. God is the foundation. Yes. The man is on top of the foundation. Mm -hmm. So if we understand biblically who a man is, women, you can understand who you are. Yes. Hear me closely, because a woman yes. is nothing but an extension of a man. Yes. The main, but not only difference, but the main difference in between a man and a woman is a woman has a womb and a man doesn't. That's the main difference. A woman only gives birth to what she receives from a man. So, ladies, if you understand this, and I'm not going to teach this from the perspective of marriage or singlehood or anything like this. We're going to look at the man, but anything I say about a man, that applies to you as well. Mm -hmm. let, let, me, let me give you some scriptures. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but let me give you some scriptures. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 2, verse 15 through 22. ESV for, for me, um, let's see. Genesis 2. I put the whole chapter of Genesis in there. Genesis chapter number 2, verse 15. Elder Jones. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So, so uh, wait, let's not go too fast. Because a man, God took Adam, the man, me and us, yes. put him. So, number one, I showed you in Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7. That a man had a relationship with God because God breathed the breath of life in him. So man, Adam and Eve, mankind and man and God had a relationship. But look what God did. The source took the man and put him in a place to stay. Yes. In a garden. So the man had a place to stay. The man had a job. Yes. Because he had work to do in the garden. And if you have a job, you can provide. That's for a man. And keep, keep it. A man was a protector. So men, that's, that's what we should do. At the core, that's what a man is. Number one, a man should have a relationship with God. First and foremost. First and foremost. I don't care how fine he is, single lady. Yes, sir. And I don't care how much money he has. Yes, if he does not have a relationship with God, leave him yes, alone. Yes, so first, if his source is God, yes. God would take him to his resources. Yes. He would take him to his house. Yes. He would give him a job. Yes. And because he has a job, he would have money in his pocket. And he would learn how to protect. That's for a man. Yes, right. yes, yes. That's, that's the core. That's manhood one on one. I don't care if you can't fix on a car like I can. <laughs> but at least the, my source has given me a resource, which means my job. And thank God I say this with humility. I have a little money in my pocket. And thanks to God, I can take the Lord to Jesus and not let me see. So before I say the latest, yes. before you get, oh God, I wish nobody would record me. I want to say something. Before you get it with him, make sure he has this. We probably ain't gonna put this up, but let me just say this. God, so impressive by what he 
can do behind closed doors. Do all those tricks. You don't want some tricks on your pocketbook. Some tricks on your back. This is the scandal. I never had it like that before. But you ain't gonna see it. Don't do it. I mean, run it. Your mental state is going for it. Don't let anybody can do it. Be real. I'm not trying to dress this up and put it all professional. We just have to go. I need to get somewhere at 16. <laughs> and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Yes, ma'am. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Keep that in mind. I'm coming back to that in part two. Number 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good. It's not good. That the man should be alone. Yeah. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, women, if you understand what I just said about a man, you sh keep on reading. Keep on. That's going to 20, 21, 2. 21 and 20. Keep on going. Keep on going. Breathe. Now out of the garden, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Come on. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. Come on. Then man, then man gave name to all livestock yes, and to the birds of the heavens and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So, so he needs some help. Yes. I have all of these resources. I got a relationship with God. I got somewhere to stay. I got somewhere to work. And I know how to be a protect, okay. pro protector. But I don't have no one to help me to protect. Okay. I don't have no one to help me to provide. Hallelujah. I don't have no one to help me with my relationship with God. Because two is better than one. Three. He put the man to sleep. Yes, and man. To fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed it up. Closed it up, placed with flesh. Yes, ma'am. Let, let, let's keep right this. Let's not move through this too quickly. Look at this, y'all. So the exact same thing that was in a man. Yes. Provider. Yes. Protector. Somewhere to work. Somewhere to live. Somewhere, um, some, something to keep. The same thing that was in him, God took a portion of that out of him my Lord. and put it in a woman. Yes. 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 22. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Let's stop right there. Let's stop. Let's stop right there. So, woman. Look, I, I'm telling you, if you understand a man, you understand a woman. Yeah. The main difference, not only difference, women, you have a womb. That's right. So the exact same thing that was in a man, the same characteristics that were in a man, God said, I'm going to take a portion of those characteristics out of you yes. and put it in a woman. Yes. Yes. So women, I, thank God for this first, first revelation. Women, before you get with a man, Mm -hmm. You should have somewhere to eat. Yeah. I mean, somewhere to live. Yeah. So, somewhere to work. Yeah. And something to keep. And you need a relationship with God. Yes. 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 Now, 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 the the culture that we are living in is different. Yes. Because let me tell you, I would advise any woman before you get with a man, you need to learn how to live by yourself. Yes. Applies to 
a woman. And God said, I'm going to take that out of a man, put it in a woman. And look what God said, now I'm going to get a relationship with you. You belong to me, not your husband. Because first you belong to God. You belong to me. Even if you don't marry nobody, I'm still your man. Spiritually speaking, yeah. 
Because God made all of us equal. Let me give you this. Yes. Identity and purpose are two words that most people use interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Some people say identity, some people say purpose. So when you hear these words, pretty much depending on the case, they, they can mean the same thing. But for the purpose of this sermon, I am going to use them interchangeably. And Dr. Tony Evans used this definition of purpose. And we're going to pray for Dr. Tony Evans. Amen. 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 Because, because he, he was one of the people that helped me through this material yeah. to develop my theology. And if you don't know what happened to him, you, you can just look it up. But but we're going to pray for him. And Amen. as people, Amen. I, I, the reason I, I have this relationship with you all, I want y'all to respect me as your pastor, yeah. but don't worship me as your pastor. Amen. Amen. I love y'all and I let y'all see my humanity to show you that I'm human. Because if I fall, and I pray that I never fall, but if I fall, if you just see me as your pastor and not your God, when I fall, you won't fall. You'll be able to reach this and say, Pastor, God, don't you remember when you push that down? You get back up. And that's what we're supposed to do. He said his purpose is the customary life calling God has ordained. So God has ordained and equipped you to accomplish, to bring him the greatest glory and achieve the maximum expansion of his kingdom. God has equipped you and ordained yes. you to do something. Yes. And he put everything you need Come in the inside of you. Yes. He lives in the inside yes. of you. Your identity yes. is in him. Yes. You belong to him. And he equipped you. Yes. He ordained you to do what you are doing before any man, any yes. preacher lay their hands on you. Yes. So let me take a step back as we talk about identity. And if you understand who you are, who you belong to, yes. let me give you this. I, I read this. Mm -hmm. Y'all, are y'all following me so far? Yes. I'm about to go. Yes. So I showed you who you are. Yes, right. But but I, as I was reading this story, this sermon of Joe's been in the back of my mind for three months because mm -hmm. this blessed me. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Genesis chapter number two. Give me the King James Version. Genesis chapter number two, verse number five through nine. We don't read some verses before it. We don't read some verses after it. But when you know your identity, I want you to see what will happen in your life. My God, my God. When you know who you belong to, come on, come on. And when you know who is in the inside of you, yes, yes, yes. Let me show you what God will do. Yes, because you are ordained. God has put everything you need <laughs> in the inside of you. Yes, God. Before Jack had met up with David, or however it worked, <laughs> God had already ordained me. Yeah. Before yeah. anybody laid yeah. their hands on me, yeah. the preacher yeah. gospel of yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Amen. But when you know y'all did it, let me show you what happened. Elder Jones, let's read this. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it. I'm sorry, Elder Jones. Elder Dad, let's go to give him verse number four, because I believe I. Picked up in the middle somewhere. Let's edit it at verse number four. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 It's going to bless you. Hey. Hey. Yes. Yes. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, mm -hmm. and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So, so before Elder Jones read the next, listen to what she read. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth, yeah. every herb of the field before yeah. it, grew, it grew, the Lord God had not caused mm -hmm. it to rain upon the earth, yes. and there was no man to till the ground. Yes, there sir. was no there was no growth because there was no man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Read it. Continue reading from the other. But there went up a mist from the earth. So there were all. Now, God does not send in the rain or any water from the sky, but he sent water from the ground. Come on. Come on. Because there was nobody in the right place who knew their identity. Yes. God help me to preach. Yes. Yes. Read this yes. Keep, 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 keep on. Right. Yes. Water about the whole face of the ground. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. We just read that. And breathed into his 
nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now look at verse 7, 8 and 9, then I'm going to close. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And look what happened. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. Ooh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you love <laughs> To grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Alicia, look at this. Wow. Go back to verse number wow. five or six, wow. wherever I was. Wow. I think it was number five. Yeah, look at this, y'all. I'm going to read it like this. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Every herb of the field before it grew, there was no growth on the earth. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. So there was no rain. And since there was no rain, there was no growth. Why? Why God did that? Because there was no man to till the ground. There was nobody. He, God, had not created a man or woman who knew their identity. So God withheld the growth until verse number nine. And out of the ground um, made the Lord God, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and, God, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Uh, so, so look, look, look. Out of the ground. Go back to verse number seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. And in the Lord, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Yes. And there he put the man yes. after he created him. Yes. After Adam knew his identity, yes. God put him yes. in a place. Yes. Yes. Now, and when he got in that place, yes. because he knew his identity, yes. growth began to happen. Yes. Yes. This is good. Yes. This is good. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. If there's no growth in your life, number one, either you don't know your identity, or number two, you're in the wrong place. Oh, come on. Some of you know who you are, but you're in the wrong place. And God has withheld the growth. Because you are in the wrong place. Yes. Some of you are trying to figure out why nothing is growing in my life. And I want nothing is producing in my life. I know who I am. Yeah, you know who you are, but you're in the wrong place. And God has not called in a water to hit your sin. Because you're in the wrong place. Or Maybe you were in the place and you experienced, you knew who you were, you God led you to a place and grew and growth happened. Mm -hmm. But when God is ready for you to move, mm -hmm. he'll stop the growth. Yeah. Because the thing that once fed you yeah. cannot kill you. Yeah. And some of you have been doing You've been doing the same thing year after year, year after year, and nothing is happening yes. because God has stopped the growth in that area mm -hmm. okay. or that place mm -hmm. and telling you to move a little bit further. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. It's like this. You know, when you are sick, they tell you to get rest. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you get some rest, uh -huh. the bed, laying in the bed, will give you strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you stay in the bed too long, the thing that wants you to give your strength, now, now, now they take your strength away. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I come to tell somebody here uh -huh. who, is, who will catch this in the realm of the spirit yes. that you are about to enter into your right place. Yes. Because Elder Lampkin, Elder Pache, Minister Pache, Elder Lampkin, Elder Jones, when I get in my right place, on, yes, yes. I don't care what the devil do. Yes, it won't stop the growth. Yes. Let me give you this and I'm a yes, yes. I'm reminded of the parable of the wheat and the 
tear. Uh -huh. And you remember somebody went out in the field yeah. to plant wheat mm -hmm. and they went to sleep uh -huh. and they woke up the next day and somebody planted a tear. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, but, but here it goes. The good, the bad, which is a tear, yes. they stopped the good from growing. Yes. 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 Good. Good. Somebody went out there and said, now who did this? <laughs> and they said the enemy has done this. Yes. When God has put some growth in your life, yes. when you know who you belong to and when you get in the right spot, I don't care what the devil do to you. Yes. It won't stop what God is doing in your life. And I come to prophesy to somebody this morning. You are about to get into your right place. Can you crack your name up by the end and say, I want you to get this and I'm going to close. And if you don't hear me, I'm going to hit you with this microphone like I say every second. I need you to first know who you belong to. Know, know who's in the inside of you. And some of you, God is about to move you into your right place. God is going to shut down. I know things can drop, but you gotta go to your right place. I know things are drying up, hey, hey, but you're about to get into your right place. We got it on the We got it I know some of you want to give up before you sit down. I know some of you want to give up. I'm reminded when Elisha was on his deathbed. And forgive me, I forgot exactly what military leader this was. But when Elisha was on his deathbed, the military leader went to him and pretty much asked him, Will we get the victory? And Elisha told this military um, um, leader, he said, if you strike the, by a bow and arrow, mm. that will determine how many times you get the victory. Mm. Yes. But God forbid, the sad part of the story, he gave up a little too soon. Yes. And he was defeated. Yes. Yes. Some of you, when you were on your way here, this was going to be your last Sunday because you were thinking about giving up. But the devil is alive. If you hear the word of the Lord, if you are about to enter into your right place. I said you are about to enter into your right place. Things are about to grow in your life. Things are about to change in your life. Things are about to turn around in your life.
the spirit of heaven that is on some of your people. I pray, God, that you give them the garment of praise. Yeah. To let them 